Hey Rollers, in one of the most viewed videos on my channel, I narrated the match where I learned that I needed to focus much more on wrestling. Later in the same tournament, I had another chance to learn this lesson again against the same opponent. That's what you'll see on this week's video. I need to point out that this was the last match of the day for both of us, so we were digging deep to find energy. My opponent and I had a good exchange when he shot for a single. I tried a front headlock and he pummeled for double underhooks while I tried to trip him. I forced my hips back and I broke the lock. I had a lot of flaws in my stand-up game, but for this tournament I chose to focus on pushing forward and sprawling on shots. That's it. I'm happy with the way I generally kept marching forward, but my sprawls could have been much more exaggerated. Now I try to throw my feet back and my hips to the mat almost violently. You'll see in a second that I got sloppy with my collar tie attempts and ended up reaching like a zombie with both hands. My opponent saw the opening and shot for a single leg. I sprawled and got my weight on him and then I spun around to find back control. He could sense I was setting up a choke, so he put his hands in what's called the home alone position after the famous home alone scream. No, not that one. Yeah, that's the one. It kept me from wrapping up his neck, but more importantly, I still didn't have an underhook to control the position. He sat up and then did this slick move to turn and face me. He was on a roll, so he hopped over into side control. Right away, I hooked his leg hoping to reverse him using the hook and roll technique that I highlighted in a video a couple of weeks ago. The problem was that my left arm was trapped so I couldn't create momentum by using my bicep against his head and I couldn't swim in for an underhook either. I was in the perfect position for a buggy choke but I didn't know what that was. Look it up if you don't by the way, it's one of the sneakiest chokes I know. I continued the battle of the legs and I managed to catch half guard just before he trapped my left arm. I can only assume he was looking for a Kimura grip. I kept my arm locked out straight so he couldn't join his hands. He abandoned that deciding instead to use his left foot to pry free of the half guard. When he did that, it gave me the chance to regain full guard. Here's an interesting battle for inside position. Look how we both want to control that inside space. There was another battle going on for posture. When he sat back, he was out of range of all of my attacks. I pulled him back down, but he had inside hand position, so he just pushed free again. I decided to open up and maybe try for a scissor sweep, but he was like, nah, enough of this. This is when I realized how incredibly tired I was. Extreme fatigue does not feel good. If you're gonna spew, spew into this. Thanks, Garth. I actually may need that. <laughs> Seriously, finding energy in this situation sucks, but you have to keep pushing. Never, ever do this. This reminds me of a time when I thought I'd take five while my opponent saw the chance to tie up my neck, drag me to the mat, and choke me. Not my proudest moment. In this match though, I got away with a tap on the forehead and then we were back in the game. He used a nice little snap down to open me up for another single leg shot. I didn't sprawl very well to start with, but then I kicked back, reached around for control of his right wrist and looked for a seat belt grip. When I had that locked up, I drove my right knee in for stability. That's when he tried to break free. My seatbelt held and I got both hooks in during a transition. I brought my left forearm across his neck for a superman choke, which worked for a tap. 
Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you for watching. <laughs>